Well, happy Tuesday morning. I'm so glad that we could get together this morning and be encouraged by God's Word to grow in our relationship with Jesus. Uh, today we're going to be con continuing in Matthew chapter 5. Uh, remember, this is Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Uh, chapters 5, 6, and 7 of Matthew's Gospel record this largest body uh, of Jesus' teaching that we have recorded in the Bible. Uh, obviously, when I'm looking and reading through the Lord's, uh, you know, through the, the Sermon on the Mount, I, I pay special attention because this is Jesus teaching, you know, and uh, he is the master teacher. And uh, obviously, I want to, to hear from my master uh, what's really important. And uh, today, we're going to talk about something I think is really critical to our understanding of what it means to be a follower of Jesus. Uh, you know, a lot of times we get caught up in uh, law and legalism as Christians, believing subtly, whether or not overtly in how we say it or just internally in how we live it out, uh, somehow we bought into this idea that um, what we must do in order for God to love us and to save us is that we must keep the law. In other words, everything that God spoke in the Ten Commandments and beyond, because remember the law is not uh, just embodied in the Ten Commandments. So you have to read the first five books of your Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy to get the full flavor of the law. Uh, there are sundry laws and, uh, and, and, and statutes that must be perfectly kept according to Judaism, in order for us to be uh, righteous or made by, may, be made right with God. Uh, so any uh, offense or any slip in any of the, the law means that, that you are not right with God and God's wrath rests upon you. Um, so thinking of that as a backdrop, you know, Jesus begins to deal with this idea of you know, what is the intent of the law? If it was impossible for man to keep the law, then what is the intent of the law? You know, a lot of times we'll look at some of the Ten Commandments, and I want to specifically, uh, you know, center on that this morning. We'll look at some of the, 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 the commandments and we'll think, hey, I'm doing pretty good. And, and one of the ones that I would say most of us, uh, I dare say all of us, but hopefully all of us, but most of us can say something we've never done is we've never murdered anybody, you know. Uh, but Jesus deals with the idea that, you know, okay, you say you haven't murdered anybody, so that makes you righteous. Well, let's think about that. So join me at verse 21. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be in danger of the judgment. Now, those listening to Jesus would have said, amen. Yes, we've heard that. We believe that. Verse 22, but I say to you that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whoever says, you fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Uh-oh, Houston, we've got a problem. Jesus says in verse 22, that if we are angry with our brother without a cause, and I want to focus on that, without a cause. You know, being angry is not the sin. You know, there is a such thing as righteous anger. Uh, when Jesus cleansed the temple, when, when he went in and turned over the tables of the money changers and drove out the animals with a whip that he made out of a leather cord, uh, I would suspect Jesus was angry. Uh, you know, I don't think he did that with a smile on his face. So being angry with cause is not a problem. And that's not simple. It's when we're angry with our brother without a cause. And Jesus says that is the same thing as murder. Now, many of us might say, well, Jesus, that don't sound fair. I mean, I, I mean, everybody's been angry with somebody. And, and you know, I, that anger, I didn't mean I killed somebody, but I, that just doesn't seem fair. But see, that's the point. Every one of us has been infected with sin. And the, the, the root of all sin is this selfish pride that makes us the center of everything. And so when we're angry with our brother without cause, it's the same root as if we murdered somebody. And that's exactly Jesus' point. What Jesus is pointing out to us is that we are 100% incapable of becoming righteous by keeping the law. We have not got the capacity within us because of the fall to keep the law. We can't even do it for a day, much less a lifetime. And that's exactly Jesus' point. 
He wants us to understand that we need a savior outside of ourselves. We can't save ourselves. We have to be 100% dependent and trust him to save us. That's his whole point in bringing this up. He does the same thing with adultery down in verse 27. He says, hey, you've heard it said that by those of old, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Again, same thing. Many would say, hey, I've never committed adultery. But Jesus says, oh, oh, really? Well, have you looked at a woman with lust in your heart? Well, 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 yeah, well, you're guilty of adultery. See, again, it's not the outward act that says whether or not we have kept the law. It's our hearts. And our hearts are going to betray us every time. See, the good news is Jesus came and he took our guilt and our shame upon himself and he nailed it to a tree. So that now, through the new covenant made by his blood, we look to the finished work of the cross to completely satisfy the righteous wrath of God because we are lawbreakers. You know, Jesus took the penalty for us so that we now have been reconciled to God through Jesus. So what makes us right with God is not perfectly keeping the law because we can't. What makes us right with God is what Jesus did for us on the cross. See, that, friend, will free you. And so you might be thinking, Pastor, that sounds great, a message for someone who's not saved. They need to hear this. No, you and I need to hear this. Because you see, I find in myself, and maybe you do too, and, and, I, and I guess you do, you, you feel the same way. Sometimes we find within ourselves this striving to try to please God in a manner or at least try to earn God's love. We feel this guilt and shame when we fall short and we feel this pride well up in us when we have done especially well. See, that's the, the taint of the law in you and I. This desire to justify ourselves, the desire to, to try to, to build our own righteousness. Friends, it's always crouching at the door. That's why you and I need to preach the gospel to ourselves daily. We need to daily remind ourselves that our acceptance with God is not because of what we have done or what we do. Our acceptance with God is through Jesus Christ and Him alone. Now, lest you think I'm saying it's okay to go and break the law and sin because, no, what I'm saying is this. When we understand the love and the mercy that Jesus has given, the grace that is flowing from the cross, it's transformative. And the more we reflect upon what Jesus has done for us at the cross, the more we're going to find strength within by the Holy Spirit to reject the things of our flesh. We'll find ourselves not becoming angry without cause. We'll find ourselves not lusting after other women or, or other men, if you're a female. Uh, we won't, we'll find within ourselves this strength to say no to those sinful impulses that well up in us because we've been changed by the grace of Jesus Christ. Friends, my prayer for you, my prayer for me today, is that we will walk in grace, that we'll remember that Jesus has done everything necessary for us to be saved and to, and to maintain our save, being saved. He's done everything to secure us, so we're held in his hand, and no one can snatch us out of his hand. He's done everything. The work is finished, and every day, Remind yourself of that grace and that mercy and let that be fuel, the fuel of love that causes you to want to serve God and to serve Jesus and to walk as a disciple. Would you pray with me? Father, thank you so much for your word this morning. Thank you, God, for, for showing us that sin is not just the outward act. It starts in the heart. It comes from a heart that's completely ruined by sin. And I thank you in, in showing us that, God. You've also shown us that the finished work of the cross, which you did at Calvary, is all that needed to be done so that the, the penalty could be paid and we could be made right with you. And Lord, I pray that today that our lives would just reflect that grace and that mercy and that, Lord, when we are tempted to sin, when we are tempted to act out of our own selfish hearts, I pray, God, that we'll be reminded of the love that Jesus demonstrated for us on the cross, the grace that, that was poured out on us, and that by the power of the Holy Spirit who lives in us, we would say no to those sinful impulses and yes to following Jesus. 
God, I thank you for giving us another day to encounter your presence. And I pray that God today, that people would see our good works and glorify our Father who is in heaven, that you, God, would get much glory from our lives. I thank you for all the people that are listening to this, that will listen to this, God. I pray that you would use it in their lives to bring about a crop and harvest of righteousness. I thank you, Jesus, for your grace and mercy. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you and have a happy, happy, happy Tuesday.